Welcome to Crime Stoppers. I'm your host, Chip Brown. Heartland Crime Stoppers is a community-based program designed to help law enforcement solve crimes by setting up a system which allows the public to phone in tips anonymously and receive cash rewards of up to $3,000 for information that leads to an arrest, the recovery of stolen property, or the recovery of illegal drugs. Heartland Crime Stoppers is funded through the Florida Crime Stoppers Trust Fund and through donations from the community. Citizens and local businesses make Crime Stoppers work. On today's show, we will talk with Chief Art Bodenheimer, Lake Alfred Police Department, and feature some of Polk County's unsolved crimes and criminals. We kick off our show with Chief Chris Nelson of the Auburndale Police Department, who has 23 years in law enforcement. Dedicated to serving the community, the Auburndale Police Department consists of 35 sworn officers and eight civilians. The department has been state accredited by the Commission for Law Enforcement Accreditation since 2010. Chief Nelson, welcome to the show today. Good morning, thank you, Chip. So glad to have you here. Now, you actually are uh, from the Bartow area originally, are you not? Yes, sir. I actually was uh, born and most of my life uh, raised in the Bartow community. Yeah. Now, you actually, your, your parents and grandparents, you actually uh, worked at the family business here in town. Tell us a little bit about that. In the early 1950s, my grandparents opened Nelson's Jewel Box, and uh, it started out in Central Avenue in Bartow. I later moved up to the uh, shopping center where Beef's is. Uh, but during high school, and uh, I worked up there in the jewelry shop and uh, kind of uh, got to be able to interact with the public in my first uh, interaction with public service. Now, were you actually a jeweler, you just setting diamonds, doing designs or repair work, or what were you doing? No, sir, just some basic uh, watch repair, you know, replacing batteries, things like mm -hmm. that, but uh, mostly sales, just interacting with people, helping them, you know, pick out something for Mother's Day or, uh, you know, birthday or something like that. Yeah, well, I know it was uh, certainly nice to be able to work for your parents and your grandparents and that tam family business. Uh, but you got a different bug, didn't you, at some point? Yes, sir. Both my uh, my father and my mother, uh, she is in the real estate business here in Bartow, so I knew fairly quickly that I did not want to uh, work for myself. <laughs> um, you know, so I uh, started uh, with the uh, Bartow Police Department Reserves in 1992, and I quickly found that that was my calling, that's what I wanted to do, and um, continued from there. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because a number of chiefs that I've spoken to over the last couple of interviews we've done uh, have all started as reserve officers and really uh, once the fever hit them, you know, they just wouldn't let go. It's really a great way to kind of get your feet wet and make sure that's what you want to do with a little investment. And at the same time, it gives the agency an opportunity to see, you know, what kind of employee you are. Yeah, well, it has, seems to have certainly worked out well for you. And I know Definitely. they're glad to have you started in Barstow. Yep. Now, when you were in Bartow, you were telling me that you worked uh, for somebody that kind of had a big impact on your life. Yes, sir. One of the, the major mentors in my life was uh, Nolan McLeod, who at that time was a lieutenant at Bartow Police Department. And he kind of took me under my, his wing early on and, uh, you know, kind of showed me the, the straight and narrow path to take. And uh, mm -hmm. it worked well for me. Yeah, it's always so nice to have that mentor to really guide you because those early years in law enforcement you know we always call it the john wayne syndrome and you uh you really need somebody to kind of hold you down so, so to speak and to really show you the correct way to do things so it's it's a long hard process uh and it's very important to have those people now uh after about four years with bartow uh came to make a big change and move up to the uh big area of North Florida. Yes, sir, had the opportunity. Uh, Nolan was actually hired as the chief of the Live Oak Police Department. They were reestablishing a police department. Um, they hadn't had one for, I think it was around nine years. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah, so it was a significant amount of time. Uh, the city commission there decided they wanted to reestablish their own agency, kind of re regain their own identity in the law enforcement, and they hired him as the chief. Okay. Now, uh, I guess you just used all the old equipment that they had laying around, or was... Well, actually, there was no equipment. Um, no equipment? No nothing. equipment at all. No cars. No. All we had is a shell of a building. Uh, you know, there were no desks. There were no phones. Uh, no officers. We didn't have anything when we started out. Oh, wow. Well, and how long did you have to get all this up and running? A few months. Um, I was hired in July, and we had to be operational October 1st. And that included hiring people, getting them trained, uh, acquiring vehicles, you know, putting desks together, you name it, we had to do it. Oh, wow. That's, uh, that's, that's amazing. Uh, on one of the earlier shows, we talked to, uh, to Chief Hope from Florida Poly, and he was telling me his startup with the police department there, and he had mentioned all the help that you and the you know Auburndale Police Department had been to him and his agency. Uh, 
I guess you really knew what he was going through, didn't you? We, we had lived that. You know, we didn't have anything, um, and we received some assistance from the uh, Suwannee County Sheriff's Office, Sheriff Robert Leonard at the time, and he helped us, you know, get some equipment for either nothing or very cheap. So I, I really had a place in my heart for Chief, Chief Hope, you know, who, who was starting out just like we were. Absolutely. Now, uh, while you were in Live Oak, you had the opportunity to go to a rather prestigious FBI school, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, Chief McLeod uh, gave me the opportunity to attend the FBI National Academy. It's a 10-week in-house training at Quantico, Virginia, the Marine Corps base up there at the FBI Training Academy. Um, great opportunity, a uh, long, uh, long time to be away from home, but just a tremendous experience that I, I still use today. Oh, absolutely, and plus all the, the contacts you make and the other chiefs and talking about problems and issues, and uh, you can learn from them and they can learn from you. So it, it really is, besides just the actual school, just the experience and the being able to intermingle with other chiefs and commanders really is invaluable. It is invaluable, you meet people from all over the world, from you know agencies from New York PD that size, you know all the way down to the, that time in Live Oak, we had ten sworn. Mm. Um, so you know there were even agencies smaller than ours that were there. Indeed. Now while you were up in Live Oak. Um, you had the opportunity to go work for the state attorney in Swanee County, didn't, didn't you? Yes, sir. Uh, one day I was at lunch and the uh, state attorney at the time, Jerry Blair, uh, who was the state attorney for the Third Circuit, uh, he offered me a position as an investigator. Uh, and at that time I was um, just ready to do something a little different. And uh, it was a great opportunity for me. Yeah. Uh, now you had some interesting cases that you worked with up there, didn't you? Know? Yeah, well certainly, you know, most people when you think of the, the Suwannee County, that Third Circuit area, you think really nothing happens. Um, but people, you know, don't remember that Ted Bundy uh, was prosecuted in, in uh, Suwannee County, Columbia County, and also Eileen Warnos came through Dixie County. You know, so there were some very high profile cases yeah. that were prosecuted through that office. And I had the opportunity to actually work with the prosecutors that prosecuted those cases. So I really got some invaluable information. Yeah, absolutely. And being such high profile cases, a lot of spotlights were on you and you really sharpened your game, I'm sure, didn't it? Oh, definitely. You had to learn, uh, you know, it had to be exactly right because the jury, uh, you know, it was a totally different perspective than working at the law enforcement agency. Mm -hmm. But as the state attorney's office, you know, every eye was on you. I'm sure. Now, at some point up there, I understand you had just basically finished building a new home, you and your wife. Yes, sir. Uh, we moved in to our new home that we had built in uh, Thanksgiving, and uh, in February, um, I, I had the opportunity to come back home to Polk County, so uh, we packed up and moved. Yeah, you probably hadn't even hardly unpacked in your new house yet, had you? No, we really hadn't. We still had boxes yeah. and everything else that were yeah. in the hallway. And you basically built it, not yourself, but certainly were very instrumental in helping build that house, weren't you? Yeah, my uh, wife's uncle was a contractor who was actually building the house, so he allowed us to do a lot in it. Uh, it was a tremendous experience, and you talk about blood, sweat, and tears being in the house, it really was. Um, so then when I came home and, you know, one weekend and told my wife, hey, I'm thinking about, uh, let's move to Polk County, you know, her eyes got very big, um, but she was a good sport and, of course, came with me. Well, that's, that's so good. Uh, now, we had talked earlier about, you know, you really built a lot of partnerships and obviously, you know, with Nolan, because when he came, was hired in Auburndale, he still thought enough of you that he reached out to you and, and drug you back to Polk County. Partnerships are really important, aren't they? They're invaluable in law enforcement, you know, especially, and I really learned that working at the Live Oak Police Department. You know, again, we had 10 sworn officers. We did not have enough people to do it all. Uh, we had a, actually a FDLE field office was there in Live Oak and really relied on them, made some great contacts there, and really learned about how important it is to successful law enforcement to make those partnerships. Well, that's good. Well, I know you're very active in the community and with law enforcement now. Uh, Tell us about Tiburon. Yes, sir, that was a, a project that I was allowed to be a part of early on. Um, and it's a, it's a program that's made by Tiburon that's actually now TriTech. But they write a report writing system and a CAD dispatching system for law enforcement. And uh, through uh, Sheriff Grady Judd, he was able to negotiate a countywide site license where any agency, law enforcement agency in the county, could actually participate and use the Tiburon product. Now the great thing about that is, is that we can share data. 
where before if, uh, you know, unfortunately uh, criminals do not know jurisdictional lines, you know, so if it happens in Winter Haven, you know, if they commit a crime there, they can easily come over to Auburndale and commit one too. Before there was a disconnect where, you know, we could request a, a report from Winter Haven, but it may be weeks by the time, you know, it worked its way through the process. Now we have instant access to that data, which allows us to, to serve the community better, not only Auburndale, but Polk County as a whole. Absolutely. Now, uh, we have just a, a few seconds left, but tell us quickly about your involvement with the Florida Police Chiefs Association. Yes, sir. I'm actually a, a board member on the association and also head up the Professional Standards Committee, which uh, it organizes and arranges all the training for the state conference. Mm. Uh, great, again, great experience and really able to make some great partnerships through yeah, that. And that's so important. Definitely. Well, Chief, we appreciate you being on the show today. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to have you back and learn more about you and the Auburndale Police Department. Thank you, Chip. Really appreciate it. For more information on the Auburndale Police Department, you can visit them on the web at auburndaleflorida.com or on Facebook at Auburndale Police Department. Crime Stoppers provides a way for local law enforcement to receive information on crimes while keeping the people providing that information anonymous. These efforts increase tips, which in turn solves more crimes and identifies criminals in our community. Here's a look at some of our most recent cases. Von Trees Cantrell Helms is wanted for burglary and battery by the Haines City Police Department Helms, also known as Bo, is described as a black male, 5'9", 160 pounds. His last known address is 107 Arlington Court in Haines City, which is where he fled from officers. Prior charges for aggravated assault with a weapon firearm were dropped in 2009 and 2011. He does have convictions for resisting without violence and cocaine possession. If you have any information as to where Von Trees Helms can be located, please call Heartland Crime Stoppers at 1-800-226-TIPS, that's 8477, or click on the Give a Tip tab. On April 25th, 2015, Macy's loss prevention personnel saw one of the two suspects back inside the Winter Haven store who had stolen $4,571 in merchandise on April 2nd, 2015. The female shopped in the men's clothing and fragrance departments while carrying a large empty bag. The suspect noticed she was being watched by employees and exited the store without removing the merchandise or making a purchase. These same women were involved in a theft of 50 Ralph Lauren polo shirts from the Lakeland Macy's on April 1st, 2015. Let's get these ladies identified. Call Heartland Crime Stoppers at 800-226-TIPS or click on our Give a Tip tab. Polk County Sheriff's Office is asking for your help in locating 23-year-old Quentin L. Floyd formerly of 3600 West Colonial Drive, apartment 304 in Orlando. Floyd has an active Polk County warrant for his arrest for violation of probation. That's under burglary and grand theft charges. He is known to frequent the Winter Haven and Lake Wales areas. Floyd is described as a black male, five foot eight and 165 pounds. Have you seen this airboat? On Friday, May 1st, 2015, a known suspect broke into the Camp Mac Resort Warehouse located at 14900 Camp Mac Road in Lake Wales and stole a pressure washer, a hand grinder, a battery charger, a drill, a generator, weed eaters, a blower, and this 14-foot Galeo airboat with a Florida hull number 3673PB and the trailer it was on. The actual airboat and trailer are seen here. At approximately 2.19 a.m. on Monday, April 20th, 2015, a white male and Hispanic male entered Hurricane Handy Mart located at 5401 Highway 60 in Bartow. 
Once inside, the Hispanic male paid for a pack of cigarettes, while the white male removed a 24-pack of Bud Light beer from the cooler. The clerk advised the white male he could not sell the beer to him. Instead of cooperating with the clerk, the white male threw a partial payment on the counter and left without paying the full retail price. The white male then left the store in what was described as a dark-colored, newer model four-door car. Lakeland Police Department needs your help in locating these two unknown suspects. On Friday, April 3rd, 2015, between 2 p.m. and 6.44 p.m., these two suspects used the victim's debit card at the Best Buy at 4215 U.S. Highway 98 North. Anyone with information on the identification of these individuals is asked to contact Lakeland Police Detective Steve Strickland at 863-834-8965 or Crime Stoppers at 800-226-8477. To remain anonymous and be eligible for cash rewards, you must contact Crime Stoppers. Do you recognize the person in this photograph? On May 6, 2015, a vehicle burglary occurred where the victim's credit card was stolen. The person pictured later attempted to purchase items at a nearby Walmart using the stolen credit card. We need your help in identifying this person. If you have information that leads to his identity and or whereabouts, please contact Detective Jason Griffith at 863-534-5034, extension 5043. Wherehaven Police Department is looking for a stolen boat and trailer. On May 4th, 2015, the boat and trailer pictured was reported missing from 650 Lake Howard Drive Northwest. The trailer had a lock on it, which was cut. The 15-foot Monarch boat and trailer was last seen on May 3rd, 2015. There's a TD bank robbery suspect still at large and the reward is $8,000. The person pictured is a suspect in multiple robberies in 2013 and 2014 of TD banks throughout Central and South Florida. The photo is from a bank robbery in Longwood, Florida where no disguise was used. In other robberies, the suspect used disguises. If you know who this person is, the process is simple. Call Heartland Crime Stoppers at 1-800-226-TIPS and tell us his name. Welcome back to Crime Stoppers. I'm your host, Chip Brown. Our next guest is Lake Alfred Police Chief Art Bodenheimer, who has 28 years in law enforcement. The City of Lake Alfred Police Department has a force of 11 full-time police officers and one reserve police officer. They provide essential services in the areas of crime prevention, enforcement of the city ordinances, federal and state laws, maintaining the peace and order of the city, protecting life and property, and generally assisting citizens in urgent situations. Chief Bodenheimer, welcome to the show today. So glad to have you. Good morning. Good to be here. Indeed. Uh, tell us a little bit about Lake Alfred Police Department, or as we say uh, in the business, LAPD. Uh, Lake Alfred's a small police department, like you said, 11 full-time uh, men and women officers and uh, one reserve officer. Um, we also have a full-time dispatch uh, that dispatches our police and fire in the city. Um, we have a population of 5,100 citizens that we cover and a, a large amount of uh, unpopulated land that uh, is in the city limits, just not uh, populated this time. Yeah, as I understand, we talked earlier that it was the housing boom kind of hit about the time you were expecting a, a lot of influx of new buildings. So uh, that's probably back on the men now, it sounds like. Uh, we, are, we are building, uh, which is good for the city, uh, building back. At one point, we actually, with the uh, plans that had been put before the commission and some of them approved, we would have probably quadrupled in population estimated in about a two-year time period. Yeah, that's, uh, that's quite a big jump, too, to have it to uh, new calls for service, new responsibilities, new areas. So. Uh, gives, you, gives you a chance to kind of catch up, maybe get ahead of the curve perhaps. Absolutely. Now, you're originally from Lakeland, as I understand, the Grove Park area of Lakeland. Is that right? Yes, sir. Uh, I grew up in Lakeland, was born at Lakeland General Hospital, uh, and uh, spent the first eight years of my life right there in the Grove Park community uh, 
on Richmond Road. And uh, then when I was eight, we moved uh, way south of Lakeland, um, off of Lakeland Highlands Road, all the way to the end, uh, you know, in between Bartow and Mulberry area. So uh, back, back in those days, you didn't hardly pass a car on Lakeland Highlands. And when I was over there that last week, uh, it was bumper to bumper the whole way down it. So it's a lot of change there. Yeah, a lot of change all over. Now, you did several things before you got uh, the law enforcement bugged. What did you do before your uh, law enforcement career? Uh, I was interested in horticulture uh, when I came out of high school at Lakeland. And uh, so I started my own lawn care business, uh, did that for a while. Um, did Tampa Airport for a while, was part of my mowing job um, that I had. And then uh, I went into truck driving for a company that delivered um, pizza and frozen foods to uh, Polk County and Hillsborough County schools um, until that company went out of business. Uh, then I worked at Juice Bowl uh, there in Lakeland, which was uh, owned by Campbell Soup at the time for about three years um, before actually riding a couple times with my brother-in-law that worked for Lake Alfred Police Department and uh, really getting uh, to like that situation and the ability to help people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's a good way. Now, did you start as a reserve officer or were you hired full time? I was uh, on auxiliary for uh, almost a year and a half with them that uh, I rode and volunteered, uh, learned a lot of stuff in those days, not only in the city, but in the county, because we had some officers that uh, had county jurisdiction, too, on our department. So I got to uh, learn a lot about different areas of the county. And uh, you got the fever and the aspirin didn't make it go away. You still uh, stuck with it. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Uh, and, and the biggest part of it, uh, like I've said, is, is being able to serve people, to help people. Um, and, and that's the part I think I really enjoy the most of, of the job is, is that aspect of it. Yeah. Now, uh, you were telling me earlier that you had 10 plus years as a canine handler. Yes, sir. I was a uh, canine handler for Lake Alfred and worked two dogs for almost 13 years. Um, one of the best times in my career, uh, even though it's a lot of hard work, um, I, I enjoyed, you know, going to, uh, to school. I enjoyed uh, the uh, apprehensions and uh, probably one of our greatest uh, accomplishments was when uh, we uh, arrested the, one of the gentlemen that uh, was involved with the murder of the uh, Haines City officer. Um, and that subject's still in prison today for that. Yeah, that was uh, some rough times, uh, a lot of uh, investigation in that. So, Now, you've really built a lot of partnerships, you know, not only with the K-9, but as your tourist police chief in other areas, and those partnerships are just really help everybody out, don't they? Chip, I can tell you in Polk County, we have a unique uh, situation here with law enforcement. Um, I've had the opportunity through a lot of the uh, organizations I'm involved with to not only go uh, through different areas through the state of Florida, but also out of the state uh, to represent the state of Florida in North Carolina and some other areas. And uh, people just can't believe the working relationship we have between not only law enforcement, but EMS, fire uh, in this community. Um, so we, we really have a unique situation in Polk County, the way we work together. That is so, so important. Now you became chief in, uh, in 2003. Did you ever see that in your crystal ball when you were a reserve officer or a canine handler? Uh, I never really did. Uh, I just, I enjoyed working the street and uh, just never thought, you know, that, uh, that, that I would uh, be in that position. Um, and uh, I was very comfortable with, with uh, both chiefs that I worked under um, for almost 18 years. Yeah. Now, uh, you, they've been very supportive of you in the department, your city commission and city manager, haven't they? Yes, they have. It, uh, it, it, it makes it very nice when you have supportive people and uh, it, it also, um, and I, I press this to my officers and dispatchers every day, is that we do have the unique opportunity um, to do a little bit more for our citizens. And uh, being a small department, we, uh, we, we do have to do that for our citizens to keep up with uh, what's going on and, and not you know, be turned over to another agency. Yes. Now, we had talked about it, you know, being having a small number of officers, when somebody is sick or on vacation or in court, what do you do? Well, uh, as a small department, uh, the chief has to wear uh, all the hats in the department. Um, it's not only just being an administrative chief, but I also go out and work the road. I work criminal cases. I work crashes. Um, and at times, there's uh, chances that we have other departments in the city, public works, public utilities, um, where we jump in. And if there's something that needs to be done uh, out on the traffic where we can help them, then we do that to uh, make those things happen for our citizens. Yeah, you were saying, I guess, it's one of the uh, the, the uh departments was unloading a bunch of plants in the roadway and uh, you were there to help direct traffic and pitched in and started unloading plants with them. Yes, uh, and, and part of that comes back to the safety aspect. The quicker we get off the roadway and, and uh, back back moving, the quicker that uh, we have a chance not to be that next uh, uh, collision or traffic crash. Exactly. 
Now, traffic seems to be a, a real passion of yours. You're heavily involved in some of the traffic things, not you know here locally, but also statewide. Tell us about some of that. Um, I, I got really involved in traffic and in in that part of uh, you know the safety back when my uh, youngest daughter, who's fixing to be 21. Uh, uh, was an infant and I just wanted to make sure that she was in the seat right and the car right and that we could provide as much safety. Um, that kind of took fold and uh, really broadened my stuff in a lot of other areas of traffic and traffic enforcement and uh, safety. Uh, not only in traffic but in bicycle for kids and for elderly folks and, and uh, everything that we could do and kind of led to some other um, uh, parts in my career that I've taken hold of and, and uh, done a lot of volunteer work for. Yeah. Now you are. Uh, you have the Polk County Traffic Safety. What is it? Uh, we have the Polk County uh, Traffic Safety Team that I'm the chair of here in the county, and that's comprised of uh, the, the four E's, which is enforcement, uh, EMS, um, engineering. <coughs> excuse me. And uh, so we we meet at least once a month on that, and we talk about different safety projects that each uh, agency is doing, or safety projects that are upcoming. Um, we talk about promotional ways that we can get the message out and then also we talk about different safety um, concerns around the county that might need action items that need to be pushed to different agencies. Yeah. Now tell me about your state involvement with the traffic safety. I um, currently am the chair of the Florida Police Chief Association Traffic Highway Safety Committee um, and that basically we meet twice a year uh, in, our, in our regular chiefs uh, conferences in that, um, but it also provides opportunity to um, give presentations to uh, NITS of the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration that we're doing, be involved in legislation in the state for safety and all different aspects of the laws. Um, and so I, I do head up that committee. Yeah, that's a lot of things to think of and that uh, back when we first started out, you didn't have to worry about people on cell phones or texting and distracted driving and there's so much is just con uh, constantly trying to stay up with the laws and make them current to make them, you know, relevant to what people are doing today. Yes, and, and you have to remember that we have increased so much in registrations in the state. We have so many more drivers on the road today. There are a lot more uh, uh, laws that have to be enforced and acted and uh, just trying to get those so that we do those and uh, we have the ability, you know, to take enforcement on them. Mm -hmm. uh, now you're also involved a little bit with uh, the SALT program. Tell us about SALT. Uh, SALT is, uh, is, uh, stands for Seniors and Law Enforcement Together. Um, basically that's a group of, there again, law enforcement and uh, different services. Uh, the uh, area aging uh, committees on their administration. We have uh, different, the Roar Home, we provide those uh, folks every year with some things at Christmas time that we've been doing for a long time, uh, promotional things for them uh, to help those folks out. We do um, bicycle safety, we do fall safety with the elderly, um, and those agencies that comprise that, uh, we actually go out and do safety fairs all around the county, and uh, we also provide them with information on uh, elderly crimes. One of our partners is the Sheriff's Office uh, um, Victims uh, Unit that uh, has a special group that, uh, that they have that we partner with. Well, if you didn't have to sleep, you'd probably have enough time to do all this stuff, wouldn't you? Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> sleep is uh, is short short notice, but uh, we get that. Well, we certainly appreciate you being on the show today and for all the stuff you do for Polk County and for the state, and glad to have you here. Thank you, and thank you for having me. For more information about the Lake Alfred Police Department, you can go to mylakealfred.com or join them on social media at facebook.com slash Department. That's going to do it for this edition of Crime Stoppers. Keep in mind, Heartland Crime Stoppers is an organization that helps law enforcement solve crime through anonymous tips and monetary rewards. It encourages a cooperative partnership between law enforcement, the media, and the community to ensure security and enhance our quality of life here in Polk County. For more information, you can check us out on the web at heartlandcrimestoppers.com or follow us on Facebook at Heartland Crime Stoppers Florida. Until next time, keep in mind, it's a crime, and you can help make sure they don't get away with it.